Hello! Um, in this tutorial we will be taking a look at how we can use this tool called Stereo Analysis Tool to extract three-dimensional properties of coronal mass ejections or CMEs from coronagraph imagery. Now at the time of a recording of this tutorial uh, this tool, this specific tool is not yet publicly available. However, uh, this tutorial should give you a basic understanding of the flow of analysis uh, you need to go through in order to use uh, triangulation uh, uh, based techniques together with uh, chronograph imagery uh, to extract three-dimensional properties of these transients. Uh, propagating in the solar atmosphere. Also, we will not be discussing the concept of triangulation in this tutorial. We have other tutorials for that. You can take a look, for example, a tutorial called uh, "One More, uh, More Than One Eye in the Sky that discusses uh, this much more in detail. Also, we will not be discussing the basic flow of trying to uh, detect coronal mass ejections uh, in the coronagraph imagery or we will not be discussing uh, the coronagraphs themselves uh, in this uh, tutorial. We have also uh, uh, other tutorials for those purposes so I definitely encourage you to take a look at uh, the tutorials discussing the coronagraphs and, and the CMEs uh, uh, more in detail before uh, checking this tutorial out. Okay, so with that uh, being said, uh, let's go ahead and start looking at how we can analyze CMEs. So uh, what I have here up is uh, integrated space weather analysis system. And what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to just go ahead and use the global date and time functionality of uh, ISWA to, uh, to go to a specific date and time where I know that there's a, a coronal mass ejection or CME of interest. Uh, that we want to analyze. So I'm going to take the time, uh, the date to uh, September 8, 2012, and time to noon universal time, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and update uh, the displays to that date and time. So as you can see, once the the ISWA pulls in the imagery for that corresponding date and time, there is a very classic type of signature of coronal mass ejection that you can see uh, in all three uh, from all three you know central spacecraft from soho stereo ahead and stereo behind here in soho last c3 imagery you can see clearly a, a propagating cloud in the solar atmosphere the same thing you can see in uh, in the stereo behind uh, imagery and you can see the propagating structure also in the stereo a core or two imagery. So there's a very clear uh, signature of coral mass ejection here. Okay, so now we want to analyze the actual uh, uh, three dimensional properties of this specific transient. So now when we enter the stereo analysis tool for the first time, we're going to be given a, uh, this kind of a blank slate here. So what we want to do uh, to get started with this uh, thing is to uh, select start time in universal time. So we're going to go ahead and, and uh, 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 pop uh, down the, uh, the calendar. We're going to select uh, September uh, uh, 2, 2012 here. And the date was uh, September 8th. And then we're going to go to that noon, uh, vicinity of the noon to get the actual uh, CME to the field of view. So let's click done. And now the tool is going to go ahead and pull imagery from you using actually ISWA uh, to get you know good view, view of the coronal mass ejection. Uh, one thing that I want to point out here that I'm actually using Chrome. Uh, browser for 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 using for using this tool at this point of time the Chrome is the the best uh, best browser to use uh, to be used together with the, the stereo analysis tool. So now we can see that uh, we have uh, two different rows here. So we have first row here uh, uh, at the at the the other top layer. And then we have the second row here in the bottom layer. And these now represent uh, two different time instants that we will be using to actually extract information about three-dimensional propagation of this thing. 
okay? So, so the first uh, row now represents the first time instant that we want to analyze. So let's, for example, uh, now pick a stereo behind and uh, Soho spacecraft imagery. Let's click this a uh, couple, uh, couple times steps backwards. Uh, we're going to be happy with the Soho here, okay? Uh, so we're going to be uh, looking at these two imagery. Now, actually, what is important to understand here that in stereo head, the CME actually looks um, much more of like a halo CME. So you can see the edges of the CME kind of what covers the full field of view, covers the entire disk of the sun, meaning that the coronal mass ejection is propagating towards or away from the observer. Uh, in this case, uh, really the triangulation type of techniques do not work too well. For the other triangulation to work well, you, you're, you're gonna have to have a good view to the nose or to the edge of the coronal mass section, like you have, for example, here here in uh, in the view from stereo behind and Soho. From so both from Soho and then as stereo behind you have a view kind of to the side uh, a side view to the coronal mass section so the, that you can actually identify the approximate location of the nose of the CME uh, in this case you really do not want to use the stereo A imagery for for the triangulation analysis for the purpose of having the difficulties of identifying the exact location of the nose of the coronal mass ejection okay so let's uh, let's settle that this is a good uh, time for for the, the first time instant. Then we're gonna use and push this timestamp to the imagery in the row below. So we're gonna click this uh, button here, okay? And then we're gonna select uh, the second time instant that will be used in the analysis, okay? So we're gonna propagate actually the time a little bit forward. Uh, let's just take a couple steps. And the same thing, we're going to propagate uh, the time uh, a couple steps forward also in the Soho imagery so that we get good separation between these two images uh, that will then provide us uh, the plane of sky speed and that will be then used in the inversion to get the actual three-dimensional speed, okay? So we have selected a uh, two time instant for both uh, 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 both uh, spacecraft that we're interested in using in this analysis process. Then we select the spacecraft to be used in the actual measuring uh, process. So we select in this case now stereo behind and we select Soho and then we go into the actual measurement mode. So we press measurement here. Okay. And that brings in, uh, us into another mode of the tool, the actual measurement mode. Okay. So what uh, we're first seeing here is the selection for stereo behind. So on the left hand side we have uh, the, the first image from the stereo behind. So what we're going to try to do here is to capture the edges of the CME. By capturing the edges of the CME we will get an uh, estimate for the, the angular size of the CME. And also what we're going to try to uh, capture in the, the first image is the leading edge of the coronal mass ejection. So a leading edge is somewhere around here. And you you want to try to capture about the center of the coronal mass ejection in, in, uh, in getting the, uh, the location of the leading edge, okay? Uh, very approximate fashion, okay? So that's our selection for the, uh, the angular size and the leading edge location in the first imagery in the stereo behind core 2 uh, data set, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and go to the, the second time step uh, 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 in the analysis of stereo behind. So, here we can see again, okay, so we have the angular size and you can see that if I modify the angular size here, that is also reflected in the angular size that you have selected in the, the initial or the first time step. Well, really the, the pr primary task here in the second time step is now to move the location of the leading edge to the appropriate location so that we can actually calculate the, uh, the, the uh, plane of sky velocity for the propagation of the CME. So uh, let's say the, the, the leading edge at this point of time is, is approximately at this location. Okay, and that completes our analysis of the stereo behind imagery. 
Then we're gonna go ahead and select this, uh, the, the do the same thing for the second spacecraft. Remember, in order to get the three-dimensional parameters from the triangulation, you have to look at this thing from two different uh, viewpoints. And now Soho provides us that second viewpoint. So we're gonna repeat the same process here. So we're gonna select uh, the first time uh, step first. We'll find out the approximate the angular size of this thing. And then we're gonna find out the uh, 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 the location of the leading edge for the first imagery. Again, we're gonna select at about the center location for the CME uh, to identify the leading edge location in the first imagery. Uh, let's say uh, that is uh, approximately right about here. And then we're gonna go to the next step and do the same thing. So we're just gonna pull in uh, the leading edge indicator for the second imagery uh, and that's right about there okay and that's all there is to it essentially now we have selected the angular sizes and the leading edge locations for Soho and also for stereo behind now we have all the information that we need to do the actual triangulation and to do the actual final triangulation we're gonna what we're gonna do in this tool we're gonna press uh, the results button and that uh, launches a script that actually then does the inversion and provides us with the other three-dimensional parameters of the coronal mass ejection so based on our selections uh, the speed of the CME is now 805 kilometers uh, per second the longitude is 132 uh, degrees, latitude minus 10 degrees, and the expected time when the CME will reach 21.5 solar radii is Saturday uh, 8th uh, uh, at 1412 or so uh, uh, universal time. Okay, And then we have also information about the plane of sky speeds here uh, at the bottom half of this display. And that's really the essential part of the CME analysis. Now, once you really got to start to get advanced with this thing, you, you probably want to use uh, multiple different choices of this imagery, maybe even from uh, multiple different uh, combination of spacecraft. If you have good side views from multiple uh, different spacecraft to the coral mass section, and then you want to keep, start to keep a uh, uh, book or record of your, uh, your, ob uh, of your measurements. And that's when this keep button here comes into the play so when you press this keep it pulls pushes your measurements into a log and then you can uh, access that log by clicking this session button here where uh, uh, let's just do for the sake of demonstration let's do another measurement here to get another record now this is completely arbitrary and I'm not doing a good job here this is just for the sake of per a demonstration how, how, how we enter this uh, uh, multiple entries into this log uh, and then just do you know slight modifications here and then just to do a little bit of a bogus bogus measurement here not this is not going not going to be uh, accurate again this is just for the uh, sake of demonstration so we're going to do get another result and just let's keep it that as well and then let's go back to the session so we can see that now we have two different measurements uh, for these two different choices of locations of the leading edge and and angular width from from uh, from 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 that uh, set of imagery, and so if you want to adjust the, the imagery, adjust the locations of the leading edge a little bit, you can uh, uh, start adding entries uh, uh, to this session, and at the end you may have you know, five to ten or so uh, entries here, and then the tool also calculates for you. Uh, the the average the mean uh, mean parameters that you get from the analysis and also standard deviations and so forth and once you really get advanced you can actually add comments uh, to your individual uh, measurement uh, measurement uh, sets and so forth but we're not gonna go into details of that in this tutorial uh, really the the core core uh, 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 part of the analysis is to, is to pick uh, uh, the images for two different time instants uh, pick uh, the appropriate spacecraft that have a good side view to the CME and then uh, in the measurement mode uh, you, you you will be uh, asked to identify the angular size uh, uh, of the CME and then also identify 
the front, uh, the leading edge location of the CME and into from two different viewpoints and then that gives you all the information necessary to actually do the other triangulation and provide you with the other three-dimensional properties of the CME.